Grace Bible Church, Pearlside Online. The enemy of faith is comfort. Pastor Norman Nakanishi teams up with retired Army Colonel Kimo Dunn and Lelehua High School assistant football coach Kimo Piseno to show us how God empowers us through uncomfortable situations to bring hope to others. In his message, Our God-Given Field. I want to talk about the harvest field that all of us have as God wants to use us because we all have an assigned harvest field to reach people that don't yet know Jesus. And here, here we are in John chapter 4. Jesus says these words, my food or that which is essential to me for life is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying that it's still four months until harvest? And he says, I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields for they are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus, the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. Jesus said, I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Jesus is teaching us the following. He's saying, look deeply, lovingly, and carefully at the people and the network of relationships that he's placed you in at school, at work, in your family, in your community. And he says, look at that unique field because there are people he's prepared for you to reach by loving relationship for him with the gospel. Can I hear an amen? Amen. How about a better amen? amen? The worst thing that happens to believers when they become part of a church is we get comfortable, we become attenders, rather than disciple makers. And tonight, as we start this weekend, we dial back to why Jesus came. He says, I have come to seek and save what was lost. And then his last words to us was, go make disciples. And he says, we sow, we sow love with love. We sow seeds of the gospel into people's lives and we continue by sowing prayer into their lives and eventually we will reap joyously a harvest of our friends and family. Sometimes we sow, sometimes we reap. There are people right now, a series of relationships I'm involved with where I'm sowing love into their lives, but I somehow don't feel that I'll be the one to lead them across the line of faith into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And yet, the way the Lord works is others have sown and done the hard work and I just happen to be in a place or I'm able to pray the prayer of accepting Jesus. And that's the beautiful thing. Nobody gets proud. Nobody's better than anybody else. But we become part of what I call the harvest cycle. But while God uses us, it's his power. And the first thing we need to do is we need to sow to the heavens through prayer. Look at here. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1-4, through 4, the great apostle Paul is talking to his main disciple, his son in the faith, Timothy, who would take over for him once he's gone on. He says, I urge then, first of all, number one, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings, and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good. This is good. Say good. It's good, baby. And please as God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. We are here because people first prayed for us and then they shared with us and they stuck with us and they put up with us and they prayed for us and God arranged for a network of relationships of love to bring us to faith. We didn't get here by ourselves and it's only by the moving of the Holy Spirit on a person's heart Will they come to Jesus? It's not by man's ingenuity. That's why when we pray for our family and our friends, our work colleagues, our classmates, when we pray, God moves. If we don't pray, God does not move. And so I'm on my knees as I speak. I've been on been on my knees for 41 years praying for friends, for family members, for people I I bump into. And I'm here because my mother prayed me prayed for me. Others prayed for me. And every day I go home, my parents live next to me. My mother's right there, strong as ever at 80, almost 86 years old. And I look at her, and she's a reminder of the power of prayer, that with God, all things are possible. This week, Jim LaFoon, the great prophet of God, returns to teach in our Every Nation Leadership Institute school. 
He does something for Pastor Joe and Osai in our church right down the street, Destiny Christian Fellowship. And then on Thursday, Jim and I and a couple other, and one other person, we go in to pray for the Lieutenant Governor Shan Tsutsui. We meet with the Deputy Attorney General. We meet with the wife of the mayor. We meet with several other people. We've been trying to get UHAD David Matlin. We're going to share the gospel with them. We're going to have Jim move prophetically in prophesying over them. We're going to ask you to pray for this moment because when we lead with prayer, the Holy Spirit moves in power. Somebody tweet that. When we lead in prayer, the Holy Spirit moves in power. Did you get that? You see? So this is the fifth year we're doing this. I want to ask you to pray. But when we pray, God moves. But we know we need to first begin with him. Now, at the same time, it's not just prayer. It's not just prayer. That's good prayer is good, but Jesus' last words was to go. And that means we need to go. There's effort. We make to be with them. At the same time, we reach out to others in our assigned field. God's put all of us in an assigned. You're not among a series of relationships by accident. You're there by God's sovereign design, and you're not there to take up space and breathe their air. You are there to influence them with the seed of the powerful, awesome gospel of Jesus Christ. And people take a while to come to Christ because we have to plant seeds that there might be a crop, there might be germination before there's a harvest of lives that are ready, that come to Jesus Christ. One of my harvest fields is the gym. Max Manea Fainga works that field with me. And uh, I'm in there and I'm working out my body, but I'm also working out my spirit saying, who will I meet today? One of our guest spots is one of the person I built a relationship with in the gym. And now he's going to come up here very shortly, but not yet. Okay? So, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, which is the gospel, and healing every disease and sickness. So we see proclamation, demonstration. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Harvest field. Here's what Jesus was facing. He was facing the same problem we face in America today. He was facing people that knew the word of God, that even knew him, but they didn't want to share about him with others. It's funny. We say, how come America's so screwed up and so messed up? It's because we who know so much with a country built on the foundation of scripture over centuries have kept our faith to ourselves and we haven't shared the powerful life-changing gospel and we haven't led the way with faith. The reason this church exists was to be this church would be crazy about reaching people who don't know Jesus. That's why a church exists. We're not called here to be a country club. The worst thing I, I fear about having nice theaters like you at Regal and you at Kaneohe and you at UNLV, what a powerful campus. And us over here in this building, some people come to church, I'm told right now, for the air conditioning because it's so stinking hot out there. That's okay. I don't care. Have them come for the Samoan donuts or the Nandings or the Portuguese sausage or the AC or the bathrooms. This house is for everybody. Slap your neighbor and say, he's preaching good tonight. <laughs> How you doing, Regal? How you doing, Kaneohe? How you doing, Grace Bible, Las Vegas? How you guys doing there in the back row? Okay, you guys there? That's right, careful. When I get real excited, I get off the stage and I go to the back row, okay? So anyway. If we are his, then we're laborers. God wants to send us. And we need to choose to enter, enter the lives of people and build relationships, invite them into our lives, but let them invite us into their lives. Because sometimes we're too busy and they extend invitations for us to go to a practice, a party, a business gathering, to have a meal, a cup of coffee. We were too busy. Let me tell you, we can't be too busy. We've all been too busy, but that one-on-one -on -one moment, that small group moment, or us reaching out, as Pastor Paris was saying, inviting them to our grace group. Last week, I invited people, and five of them came. They don't know Jesus yet. And it's, you know what they say? 86% of people who don't know Jesus, who are invited, when you invite them and you lead with prayer, they will come. So why don't we do that? We don't do that sometimes because we don't care. Did that hurt? 
You know what? And we have hearts that don't care when we don't live in prayer. Because prayer keeps us in the presence of God where the Lord speaks to us and he massages us and he touches us and he says, you're not here for yourself. You're not even here for your Christian friends. You are here for those who don't know me. So I want to send you. Will you go with the gospel? And will you share me with others? Will you extend my love to others? And so I'm looking up there. We have one of our intercessors up there. Her name is Sherry Aquino. She's been my barber for what seems like 100 years. This gorgeous hair that you see is a work of her art. (laughs) Let me tell you how Sherry got into the church. When this church was barely a week or two old, my wife and I invited her to a small group in our house. She was a Catholic. After I don't know how many, Sherry, we shared the gospel with her. She received Jesus. The next week, we prayed for her to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. She began to speak in tongues and fell into our curtain that we had just put up after remodeling our house. She's been my, our, she was one of the first believers in this. And she lives right across the street. Now she's one of our lead intercessors and she's up there praying for me as I speak, praying that I don't say any more stupid things that incriminates her image. How's that? She's praying for me now as I speak to you. I remember when Faye and I prayed for her. She received Jesus. Then we prayed for her with a laying on her hands. The power of God hit her and bam! Woo! Yes! Slap your neighbor and say, that's good again. Like that part. Artie Wilson was here with Marie. How many of you were for Artie? Right? Let me tell you, in spite of what he denied that he used to mock me, maybe that's a strong word. Okay, when I used to help with the football team and athletes at the University of Hawaii, he wasn't mocking me, but he was snickering. I said, man, what? Let's look, Artie, it's the degree of magnitude. Then he invited me into his life after I had invited him into my life and he had rejected it for years. But when a storm hits, you go. And for me to see him, him up here last week was huge. We had 25 people receive Jesus because he shared the gospel. And now Artie does the same thing. He takes the gospel, he's an apprentice grace group leader, it's at his office, the Kahala group meets with uh, Coach Jones and Artie and, and, and these, these, these high maka maka people <laughs> led by, I used to lead that group, but I, a Kalihi guy couldn't stay in Kahala any longer and I'd come back to the west side, okay? So what I'm saying is take the gospel out there for crying out loud, okay? Amen. Sorry, I'm just kind of manifesting a little bit. Now, here's what scripture says. Neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. What is scripture saying here? Here's what scripture says repeatedly. And in the great book of Daniel, the prophet in the Old Testament, so vital and so valuable is our role in reaching lost people that God says there's a great, the greatest rewards go to those who take this seriously. In fact, fact, the glory of the believer who wins souls, not only is he wise, as Proverbs says, it says his glory will shine like the stars of heaven. It's very important. We forget when we become believers that we think that we come to church that people just get saved or come to Christ by themselves. They will not come to Jesus unless we share the gospel, unless we go. Now, having said that, I wanna call up Colonel Kimo Dunn at this point. All right, Colonel Kimo Dunn, Jesus said, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, which means we penetrate the gates of hell. He is a colonel. He's taught us as leaders about how the army is broken down and how really the smallest units really are the most powerful units because they break through the enemy lines. You have been living in a gated community up among the high makamakas of Mililani. I live in the hood in Pearl City. You have now moved to Wahewa. You said in our Grace Group Leaders session, you have downsized from the rich and now you live among us poor. (laughs) But the whole point is you downsized and there's a reason and a purpose of God that's being expressed to that. So just like at Lelija Bakery, 
talk to us about this moment. And his first wife is here, Carlene, his only wife, okay? His only, <laughs> Regal and Kaneohoi and UNLV, you guys okay? I'm not like this all the time, but Colonel Kimodan. Hi, good evening. A uh, couple things. One is uh, what Pastor is talking about, being comfortable, being comfortable in your setting. And uh, we lived in a very nice setting in a gated community, as Pastor uh, mentioned, but we were comfortable. And, and we thought that, well, at least I thought, that we'd just stay there and retire. Um, but uh, there's moving, and it's going to Waiwa was a place to be, uh, it's really my home. Uh, that's where I'm from. But uh, going there brought us out of our foxhole, or brought us out of where we were and being comfortable, going out to being uh, a place where we can reach and be called. Uh, so we live uh, next to uh, neighbors, and we're praying for them. And it's interesting that uh, you hear different things when it's close by. I mean, literally, you hear F you this, F you that, a uh, lot of noises, pounding radio and stuff like you heard, that. You didn't hear any of that in Mililani Malka behind the gated community? Uh, it was a little bit more silent. Yeah, older, a little bit older generation. So. But uh, my wife and I, uh, we hear it at night in our bedroom, and we're just praying for them. And uh, to be frank, at first, I was really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is that. And at first we were like, hey, maybe we should call the cops, honestly. It would just go on for hours of the night. But we realize what God has called us to do, and that is to get out and go into our harvest field, which we've been called to do. You essentially have gone home. Yes. Why, why is your roots? Right. Full circle. Full circle. Full circle. Right. Um, I like you know, what Kimo said to our, our group of grace group leaders. He said, we went from, the, from the, um, the gate and the wall to the chain link fence. I like that because you can see through the chain link fence. You know what a lot of Christians do? They hide behind the wall. Can you leave us with this, Kimo? You talked about the army structure, the squad, the platoon, the battalion, the regiment. And tell them how important the small is. Yes. Shows. Well, the, the team or the squad is, is the smallest element of the army, and the army is built on that. And basically, if that building block is solid, mm -hmm. the rest of the organization is, is strong. Uh, so with that, in our small groups, if we can go out and reach others and interlock with others. And I was just praying there in my seat, and uh, if there's anybody out there, I just thought about it. You know, we want to take Waiwa. Waiwa is moving. Uh, if you've if you ever been to Waiwa and you used to see some of the, the bars and all that on, the, on California Avenue um, and Kamehameha Highway, surfers, uh, the Christian Surfers Coffee Shop, uh, that's a place I just thought about it. Tuesday night, if there's somebody out there that lives in the area, uh, maybe about 7 o'clock, let's start a small group. And, and for men out there that we can get together and really share Christ in Waiwa. So if somebody's out there right here or out there, uh, come, come out, get in touch with me. I'll, I'll give my number and so forth. But let, I want to start a men's group in that coffee shop. Pretty cool place too. Uh, but then we can get together and lock arms and then pray for Waiwa and that area and, and share the gospel. Your wife, Carlene, is a grace group leader. She's there. Um, you lead two grace groups, and here's what I like about Colonel. He's right among his own people group, the military, and that's his harvest field. And so what he's done, he's touched a lot of lives over the years, and he's got twins, okay? So he's on duty, and you would call that a squad? Yeah, team squad. Army, army, the army term. Colonel Kimo Dunn, I was at his promotion to full colonel on the battleship Missouri a few years ago. How about a hand for him? Fighting for Lawson. This is the Kimo and Kimo night. The second Kimo I want to call up is Kimo Paseno. And I'm going to, uh, that's pretty good, man, how you do that thing right there. That's good, that's, that's football drills, that'd be good, man. Just need to get down in a three-point stance and it'd be happening. Okay. Just uh, got to work on that 90 yeah. degree. Right here. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, as you know, you've, many of you, if you remember three years ago, we heard from Kimo Paseno. Kimo Paseno, 
also was in the military, uh, in the Marines to be specific, at the highest level, um, involved also with LA SWAT, police work, military, guarded the president once. Um, and he's a football coach now for the Lelehua Mules. Go Mules! Go Mules! Come, Kimo, come further this way. Um, and so he helps coach Nolan Takoda. He's an assistant football coach. His boys have been star players for the team. Two have gone on to college now. And his youngest is on the team, just got hurt, so he's recovering. But we, we find that he can't help himself. So in the place of his vocation, He's actually broken out a number of what I call huddles or groups. It's called the Brotherhood. There you are in the upper left-hand corner. And so what we see is they've got our guide, and these high school students go after the word together and pray for each other. I happened to be there that day, and I was very, very moved by how young people are hungry for the word of God. And so he's done this now. This is his harvest field. The football field becomes your harvest field. You haven't hid faith there. And now, with the blessing of Coach Dokuda, you have something called the Brotherhood, but more significantly, you shot me a picture recently that moved me as soon as I got it. Explain this picture to all of us, because we say one life counts. Pardon me, um, it's just that I'm an ordinary man, but I serve an extraordinary God. Amen? Yeah. You know, I'm motivated, you know, when it comes to Helping these young men, you know, every single man, woman, and child has a vacancy in their heart. And we as Christians, we must stay prayed up like Pastor said. Mm. Always stay close to God and your eyes will be open to see the hurt and the pain and the doubt and the despair and the fear and the anguish in those that you uh, work with. It happens to be the football team for me. And that young man there, along with others, there's a lot of pain, whether it's parental abuse, divorce, drugs, alcohol, sex, you name it, they go through, through it all. And that particular picture there is that young man's father uh, made him help hit the dad move out, put all his stuff in stores, and he messed practice, and he wasn't doing well. And I caught that, and I pulled him aside, and he just... He fell apart and I fell apart. But what I want to share with you is that vacancy can only be filled with the love of Christ and the spirit of Christ. And we here on earth, some, most of those people, they just don't know Christ. So we must be that image of Christ. We must give them love and compassion in our time. And it must be continuous. And we must continue to do it over and over again. And as Pastor said, I open up my heart to them. And it will take them time. But as we continue to love them, they will begin to open up and share themselves with us in like kind. And that's when we can start telling them what motivates us, that it's Jesus Christ. That's it. You've that's opened it. up your home. You can yeah. cook. Yeah, yeah, you, we can cook. This act, you, we can cook. There's nothing you can't do. You can cook. <laughs> I mean, well, I gotta like, eat, so I gotta cook. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the Book of Acts. You know, they're breaking bread. You know. Uh, Don't get me wrong. Anthony gave me some recipes too. So. <laughs> yeah. The brotherhood. The brother. Um, um. You know what's interesting is both both of your boys, stellar athletes. Um, your boy now, before he got hurt, and he's got another full year coming up as a quarterback. Mm -hmm. And so Lelehua is limping on a few cylinders. Congratulations, by the way, for defeating Castle, 10th ranked Castle last night. And uh, I was hard, because they're, they're a beat up young football team. But here's, here's the thing. Kimo Paseno, Coach Paseno knows, sometimes we, you know, it's football season now, and there's lots of families in every church whose kids play football, the rosters are big, so you might have 50 kids, so 50 families. And everybody runs to the football field, but the goal sometimes get lost. It's to have their kid become a star to get the scholarship to a prep school or a university or college, but they forget that it's really a harvest field to touch people for Jesus. And Kimo Paseno and his boys haven't forgotten that. They understand that, har that football fields and athletic fields are harvest fields. And the big challenge in America today, 
pastors see is that people now bust out of church on Sunday, forget about Jesus on his day, and make their kids an idol. I'm going to let that sit for a little while because you're looking at a man here who refuses to do that. You say, it's not possible. Listen, that's how come we got 11 services, 310 small groups. There is no excuse for not being in a place where we're getting fed so we can give out to others. Slap your neighbor a third and final time and say, that is exceptionally wonderful. <laughs> no excuses. A parting shot from you to all of us on how we can make our own field where we work, where we go to school, where we do community. What does it come down to, Kimo? Because you, 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 this came out of scratch at risk because this is a public school. Separation of church and state. Um, what works for you in creating the brotherhood now that's perpetuated itself? Hey, don't, uh, don't share this with anybody outside these walls, but Coach Takuda, you know, we came across some situations that were bordering like what the pastor's talking about, and he says, you know what, Kimo, I don't care. You go out and do it, and I got your back, and I'll deal with the administration. So just giving me the green light, I've just been on fire and just keep going and going. I look over my shoulder, am I going to be called out by the administration? And we haven't, praise the Lord. So we're just pouring the love of Christ into them. Um, Nolan has given me the opportunity during practice when I see some of the boys that are down, I leave my responsibilities as running back coach because my main responsibility is the care and welfare of them spiritually and emotionally and mentally. And so that's what I try to do, right. try to talk to them and see where their head's at. Right. And, 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 and that's about it. But my parting shot is this, that staying close to Christ allows you to have that spiritual awareness that you wouldn't otherwise have. Mm -hmm that you will see the pain and the despair and the longing and that vacancy I talk about. Mm -hmm. And you go out on a limb sometimes, That's but right. you have to have the courage to do that and just step forward, give them your love, you spread go. the love of Christ and just befriend them. And once they begin to trust you, then they will start to trust Christ. And that's my ultimate goal. I want them to have Jesus as much as I do. So this guy, so what this guy does, he, he coaches the running backs, okay? He coaches the running backs, then becomes pastor, then becomes chaplain, then becomes weightlifting coach, but he understands his priority, that ultimately he's there to honor him. And I don't know about you, can you help us spread our word to all of our parents where their kids are on football fields, they were on tomorrow, next week, that really the goal is not to create stellar athletes. Yes, we want them to be great athletes, but more than that, we want them to glorify God. More than that, we as parents need to understand there's one family or one young man like that that God is saying, that's the person right now. Leave what you're doing. Go be with them because I want to use you to bring them to me. Kimo, thank you, coach. For seven years, Tony Holyfield and I had the pleasure of being the, chap the chaplain team for the University of Hawaii football team. In those great years, Coach Jones has been in our church for nearly 10 years now. And um, this is a shot from the front page of the Honolulu Star Advertiser back in 2007, just before they went to the Sugar Bowl. They had defeated uh, Washington. They went 12-0. and 0, um, And people were coming to Jesus, families, players. And I'll tell you why. Because Coach Jones did what Kimo said. I want this locked into your minds. The university administration, we were just having coffee recently. And he said, Norman, what you don't know is through the years, the university claiming separation of church and state said, June, you've got to stop doing that or we're going to write you up and let you go. We're going to fire you. And June Jones said, I got to do what I got to do with the word of God. If you have to fire me, fire me. Well, then they went 11 and 3 and 12 and 0, went nationally ranked and guess what? The night before, he left. Government officials were calling my house. 
can you please tell him to stay? What happened to separation of church and state? Here's my point. Sometimes, as Kimo said, we as Christians are so chicken about what people say, think about us and say about us, and yet we serve a God whose word transcends all that. If we obey him and we risk our reputation, think less about what others think about us and say about us. Care more about what God thinks about us. And more importantly, as you saw in that picture, what he thinks about those who don't know him. He loves them. His son died for them. And the only way he's going to reach them is through us. Will you take your neighbor's hand? Father, our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. We used to say this before games. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Through us, through all of us, extend your kingdom. Extend the love of Jesus. Extend the gospel. Forgive us for having contained your word and your love into our own lives because we're so concerned about a Jesus, being a Jesus freak. We're so concerned about what people will think about us and say about us. Oh, we're so concerned about losing our job. When really at the end of the day, when you say go and I'll protect you, and we honor you and we risk it, great things happen. You risk your son. Jesus, you risk the pain of becoming sin for all mankind. And Lord, we love you for that. We remember as we took communion last week who you are, the awesome Son of God, Lord of all, lover of our soul. Jesus, we endeavor tonight to look deeper and further and more carefully into our field of relationships of people who don't yet know you to sense who is that family, who, are, who is that one person, who are those people that you're saying, in my field of relationships, bring the gospel to them. Invite them into your life. Let them invite you into theirs. Lord, help us not to hide you. Just to, let it not just be friends and friends and getting together, but the gospel never comes out. The invitation never goes out. Make sure, Lord, that our hearts burn with a passion for you and for those you died for.